Hello and welcome to Football Daily, where today we're looking at 10 players who lost their lives because of football. Abdun Porte Football gives everything to some people, but sometimes it takes everything away. Abdon Porte was a Uruguayan star in the early 1900s, making over 200 appearances for Nacional, the side which in recent years has given us Diego Godin and Luis Suarez. A midfielder who could also play in defence, Porte won the league four times and picked up 19 trophies with the club. But by the time he was 25, he was struggling to keep hold of his place. Alfredo Zibeci finally ousted the skipper from the lineup in 1918, and Porte was devastated, but an injury to his rival saw him get a chance to win his spot back. Porte put in an exceptional performance as Nacional beat Charle FC 3-1, and afterwards the whole team went out for drinks to celebrate. The captain left in the early hours, and his body was found the next morning at the club's stadium. He had walked out to the middle of the pitch and shot himself, leaving a note asking Nacional's president to take care of his mother. He couldn't face being dropped again and wanted to die with one last win. Yuri Tishkov as a player, Yuri Tishkov turned out for Torpedo and Dinamo Moscow, with Alex Ferguson once claiming an interest in the striker. However, his career was cut short when he clashed with Sergei Bodak in a Russian Cup game in 1993, leaving him with multiple fractures to his leg. The foul was so brutal that Bodak was given a lifetime ban. By the time he was 28, Tishkov was retired but stayed in the game, working as a TV commentator and as an agent. His clients included a young Andrei Arshavin and Alexander Kurzhakov, but in Russia at the time the business was tough, with friends, family and coaches out for a cut of players' earnings. In 2003, at just 31, Tishkov was found stabbed to death close to his Moscow home. He had more than 30 knife wounds and, strangely, hadn't been robbed, with the murderers leaving his briefcase, which contained a large sum of money. It's thought he was killed over a contract dispute, but a decade and a half on, the crime remains unsolved. Andres Escobar In 1994, the Colombia team was a powerhouse. With stars like Aspria and Valderrama, many pundits, including Pele, tipped the cafeteros to take home the World Cup that year. And Andres Escobar was the team's defensive star, a centre-back whose elegance and fair play earned him the name the gentleman of football. Colombia's hopes would unravel in heartbreaking fashion. A loss to Romania was followed by defeat at the hands of the USA, with Escobar turning a cross into his own goal. The nation finished bottom of their group and were home just eight days after the tournament began. Escobar was to face a higher price. After spending an evening in a bar on his return to Medellin, he was shot six times in the parking lot, with the killer apparently shouting gol. It's thought that the hitman was in the pay of a cartel boss who had lost a fortune betting on Colombia. Robert Mensa. Goalkeeper Robert Mensa was one of Ghana's most famous men in the early 1970s. Always dressed in black sweater and a flat cap, Mensa was nicknamed Yashin, and was as much showman as footballer. During games, he would occasionally pull out a newspaper and read it between the sticks, but he was an excellent stopper, winning the African Champions League with Asante Kotoko in 1970 and finishing runner-up with Ghana at the 1967 Africa Cup of Nations. Mensah was named the best keeper at the tournament, but his antics singled him out for particular hatred from rival fans. In 1970, after a 3-1 away win in Liberia, Mensah was chased off the field by fans throwing stones, and before long, Ghanaians would turn against him too. A defeat in Togo in 1971 meant the Black Stars would miss out on the next year's Cup of Nations and an opportunity to improve on their second place four years earlier. Mensah went out to drown his sorrows, but got into an argument with fans at a bar, and an electrician called Isaac Melfa stabbed him with a broken bottle. He died four days later. The whole country went into mourning, with children skipping school, thousands attending the funeral procession, and one man reportedly drinking himself to death out of grief. As a mark of respect, Mensa's first club named their stadium after him. The club's name? The Mysterious Dwarves. Jimmy Thorpe the only footballer on our list whose death was accidental, Jimmy Thorpe played in goal for Sunderland in the 1930s, making his debut at just 17, and by 19 he was a regular in the first team, then one of the best in the country. At the time, keepers had very few of the protections they're given today, with forwards regularly clattering them in the hope of knocking the ball loose. In 1936, during a match against Chelsea, a defender played the ball back to Thorpe, 
with two blue strikers chasing after it. The stopper picked up the back pass, which was totally legal back then, but was kicked in the head and chest by the Chelsea men. Dazed, he saw out the game as the Black Cats gave up a 3-1 lead to draw, but was subsequently admitted to hospital, dying four days later. The cause of death was given as heart failure brought on by the rough usage of the opposing team. Sunderland went on to win the title, with Thorpe's widow receiving his medal, and the rules were changed, preventing outfielders from challenging a keeper holding the ball. Josef Klotz and Leon Sperling The first goal scored by the Polish national team came from the boot of Josef Klotz in 1922. The defender was, surprisingly, on penalty duty and netted a spot kick in Poland's 2-1 win over Sweden in what would be his second and final appearance for his country. In the same side was Leon Sperling, a tricky left winger who, like Klotz, hailed from Krakow in the south and who would earn 16 caps for the White and Reds. The men shared something beyond their place of birth and footballing ability. They were Jews. At the time, Poland had several Jewish clubs, with Klotz turning out for Utrenka and Maccabi Warsaw, whose rivalry was so fierce it was known as the Holy War, a name now given to Wisła versus Krakowia. Sperling was one of Krakowia's earliest stars, captaining the side to three titles between 1921 and 1932. Sadly, their prominence made them targets, and in 1941 both men, along of course with the rest of the Jewish population, had been forced to live in ghettos, separated from the rest of the society by the Nazis. They were murdered in the Holocaust, becoming two of the three million Polish Jews killed, a staggering 10% of the total population of the country. Amilcar Enriquez With 85 caps, Amilcar Enriquez was among the 10 most capped players in the history of Panama. A tough tackling midfielder, Enriquez spent his whole career in his homeland and in Colombia, winning two titles with Arabe Unido. Arabe are based in Enriquez's birthplace, the province of Colón, long known for gang violence, and football couldn't free the player entirely from his background. In April 2017, while leaving his house, Enriquez was shot by a gang of teenagers who had planned the murder carefully, according to the police. He was 33, and Delano Wilson, a bystander who was also killed, was 36. Nothing was taken, leading to speculation that the beef was related to football, and sadly, the incident isn't isolated. Since 2011, at least three other players and coaches have been murdered in Panama, an ugly underside to the beautiful game. Sandor Such a three-time title winner with Uzpest in the 1940s, Hungarian defender Sandor Such played for the mighty Magyars alongside legends like Hide Kuti and Ferenc Pushkash. This golden team was the best in the world, and when the Soviet Union installed a puppet government in Hungary after the Second World War, they knew that keeping the best players in the country would help their cause. At the same time, Such had started an affair with the wife of a prominent Uzpest fan, and even threats from the AVH the secret police couldn't persuade him to end the relationship. The couple resolved to flee to Italy, where Torino had offered Such a lucrative contract, but they were caught at the border with a smuggler who had offered to help them, turning out to be an agent of the AVH. Despite pleas from his teammates, Such was sentenced to death by hanging. The Communist Party used his execution to intimidate stars like Pushkash and Coxish into remaining in Hungary, and it was another 38 years before the player's family even found out where he was buried. Lutz Eigendorf A talented midfielder, Lutz Eigendorf was an East German who played for Berlin side Dynamo in the 1970s. At the time, Dynamo was the favoured club of the East German secret police, the Stasi, who would fix important matches with the aim of demonstrating socialist superiority. Eigendorf played more than 100 times for the side, but during a trip to West Germany in 1979, he managed to escape, defecting in the hope of a freer life. Stasi chief Erich Mielke was humiliated and immediately made plans to deal with the problem. Eigendorf's wife, stranded in East Berlin, was given a quick divorce and remarried to a man who turned out to be an undercover agent assigned to keep an eye on her. Eigendorf himself continued to play for Kaiserslautern and Braunschweig, but was watched by agents of the East, with the Stasi even noting down his favourite brand of milk. In 1983, the midfielder was killed in a car accident, crashing into a tree after he was blinded by a lorry's headlights. His blood alcohol was very high, though friends who had spent the evening with him claimed he had not been drinking. However, it wasn't confirmed that Eigendorf was murdered until 17 years later, when Stasi files were uncovered, revealing that his death had been engineered by Mielke. He was just 26 when he died.
We meet again, it's the end of a video, you've made it, I'm proud of you. Remember to click right here to subscribe, like of course, and stay right here on the channel for more great content.